I can't lose again. Please, I cannot lose again to them. Please. Hello, all Microman here. Welcome to the biggest episode of my FM19 Aston Villa save so far. Three games today. Manchester United away. I'm not sorry, can't you call? <laughs> Manchester United away. Real Madrid away. And then league leaders Chelsea at home. You can tell I couldn't really bend my finger like that. So, yeah. <laughs> Good start, Mike. Good start. So to quickly fill you in with where we are in the league, we are second, only to Chelsea. We are on level points for them. They have scored, got a better goal difference by only two. Tottenham are two points behind us, as are our opponents in the first game, Manchester United. Since the last time we met, it's pretty much been all wins, apart from the last game against Swansea. Southampton were dispatched 4-0. We beat Brentford 7-0 with the backup, uh, with, well, with the second tier, or second squad, whichever you prefer. Uh, Brighton, we beat 4-0 away from home, then beat AS Monaco 2-0 away in the Champions League, which was a big result for us. And as you can tell there, we kept six clean sheets in a row, but we did lose that to Swansea as they scored first, but we did well to come back and get a last gasp equaliser to make sure that we maintain our unbeaten run to the start of the season. Yes, we should be beating them at home, but getting a point at this stage could be more valuable come the end of the season. We just don't know. It will be especially more valuable if we manage to somehow beat Manchester United today. Big news, unfortunately, is that Antonin Vile is very injury prone. He is out again for nine to four weeks with sprained knee ligaments. It is a bit worrying that he's picking up these injuries left, right and centre at the moment. And so with that in mind, we are going to have a little bit of a mixed lineup today. Christensen's in goal. Fila, Markovic, Mai and Hassan are the back four. Mai seems to have overtaken Zankadu. He's playing at 7.73 at the moment, Lucas Mai. Performing well above his station and doing very, very well as one of our team leaders. He also has a very good relationship with Markovic, which also helps. Uh, then we've got Bentecourt and Diaz in the middle of the park. Diaz not happy because he's not been getting uh, a lot of first team football. He's concerned by being replaced by Bentecourt. Now that Vial has obviously got an injury, it's time for him to step up and show he has the quality to play for this club. Martial, Mora and Gaitan are the midfield three in by Mick McWilliams. Or Mora carrying a bit of a knot, but I have to play him today. Jerry Tossum's on the bench if need be. United's lineup hasn't changed much over the last two seasons. Obviously, the big one is that Godfrey Poku is now their main man up front. But other than that, it doesn't look too dissimilar from the team that we played in the Community Shield at the start of this season. We owe Man United after what happened. And obviously, a lot of these players played in that Community Shield game. And hopefully, they will want to make amends for what happened there. We actually played a very good game and we were unlucky to lose. So, let's go with the same lineup. Come on, this is such a big episode. We get... Three wins here, at least two wins in the league, and we are bang in the right position to go on and win this league title and make it our own. But we have to do better in these big away games. So far, we've notched up wins against Liverpool and Arsenal away from home. Obviously, they're both big teams, so to beat United, though, would just be the cusp, you know. That would be a real statement of intent. They went nearly the whole season last year without getting beaten, and they've, uh, they're not beaten yet in this year. If we can be the first ones to beat them this season, it'd be such a doff to us. First highlight here, just before the half an hour, Mark and Rashford darts inside with the ball. Plays a nice ball for the God for Poku. He finds Mbappe, and he scored, but I think it's going to be ruled out for offside. It looked offside on the replay to me. Has it been given? Oh, good, it's been cancelled out. Thank God for that. But I'm a bit worried about how quickly they cut through us there. Oh, that's tight. But he is just off. The right decision has been reached, but only just... Come on, boys. Don't don't panic. Don't do that again. Oh, no. They scored from against us last time from a uh, set piece. Mbappe, we cleared the corner. Great save by Christensen. United beginning to turn the screw a little bit. We're going to go from positive down to balanced. It's just wave after wave of United attack at the moment. We need to try and break on them if we can. Zaniolo spreads the ball to Spadalia. He hits it in. Godfrey Poku misses the ball. Mbappe on it now. Ben's one. Oh, what a goal. What a goal by Kylian Mbappe. And that's what you pay the big bucks for. Ah, oh, fudge. That's a superb finish. We drop down to third. United hit, take first blood in this game. Decent header there. Mbappe just picks up. We're a little bit slow to get out to him, but, I mean, look at the bend on that. That's a ridiculous strike. It's his sixth goal of the season already. What can you do about that? There is nothing we can do about that. Feeler's having a mare, though, and, oh, no, don't be two. Pogba at the back post. It's two. We're falling apart. We just cannot beat United. We just can't beat them. They're so shit in real life that it's really annoying that it's not been replicated in this game. Pogba, great header at the back post. Spend enough money and you'll win everything. Is the uh, it's a good you know it's a good thing to have. It's a good lesson to learn. Money buys you everything. 
Don't hit it long. Play the ball out. That's nice. Anti Martial against his old club. Come on, mate. Come on, Anthony. Skins a man. Back to McWilliams. Back to Anthony. Must be. McWilliams hits it. It's oh, a good save by De Gea. We've had a shot. That's something, I suppose. God, it's been an absolutely nightmare half. I'm going to get aggressive and say, show me something else in the second half and something needs to change here. We are all over the shop. Here's one that you haven't seen in a while. The 5-2-1-2. Let's see how we get on. Uh, I've taken off Santiago, Gaitan and Fila, both of whom weren't having particularly good games. Fila particularly playing at 6 is absolutely awful. Hassan's not fared much better, to be fair. But we've got to bring them on. And so uh, on come Corrado Macario and Zagadou at the back. Uh, if worse comes to us, well, not if worse comes to us, I'm going to have to bring on Glenn Hazel at some stage or another. But let's just see how we get on with this formation. And I've just got to try something against United. There's got to be a formation or something I can do that makes us more competitive against them. Because at the moment, every time I turn up against them, I just think we're going to get shafted. And to be fair, we are. We're just getting absolutely humiliated every time we play them at the moment. It's infuriating because it just feels like there's nothing I can do. They're just a team that's just too good. They're just unbeatable. And the game shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't. Right, well, I'm going to go for it. Oromora has been absolutely piss poor, so I'm going to take him off. On comes Glenn Hazel. He goes and sits up front with Martial and McWilliams. We are really, really going for it now. It's just, it's genuinely impossible to beat them. Genuinely impossible. It's too easy for them. And it's infuriating. They've just got so much money and we just can't compete. We just cannot compete. A deserved victory for United. Paul Pogba a... Yep. A wanger. That's what he is. He's a wanger. Glenn Hazel's doing my head in as well. He's just useless. Chelsea are playing today. They'll probably win and stretch their lead over us. And it's already annoyed me. It's already off to a bad start. Yep, Chelsea won 1-0. So we fought even further behind the leaders now. Annoyed doesn't quite describe how I'm feeling right now. I'm just... I'm feeling lot. I'm feeling hopeless. I feel like the situation is hopeless. There's just we cannot, for whatever reason, we just cannot compete with the United. We just can't compete with them. I realise that Abba Miguel is asking for some more game time, and you know what? To be fair to him, he can't be as bad as Diaz was there. So I am actually going to give him a go. Timo Forster has got an injury for a day. That's not the end of the world. <clears throat> the big decision I've got to make now is away at the Bernabeu. Do I go with our full strength team or do I rest up and really go for the Chelsea game? We know where my priorities lie. My priorities lie in the Premier League. But, 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 it's Real Madrid and I don't want to be on the end of a spanking. So we've actually played Real Madrid before. Uh, we drew one and won one. So we actually beat them in the Champions League before. We have a very good recent history in this competition. We always make it to the latter stages, to be fair. Um, in recent seasons and we are five points clear of Monaco after two games which is good news as long as they don't pump Krasnodar I think we're still very much in the driving seat right so I've really rung the changes today uh, Christensen is in goal Kopilov, Zagadou, Markovic and Hassan make up the back four normally this might be my my strongest back four maybe Fila for Kopilov potentially but I feel that I need to get this defensive unit working again. Miguel is going to be partnering up Goretzka today. Miguel has deserved a chance every time he's played for me. He's always played really, really well. And I've probably mistreated him a little bit. And I feel bad about that. So he's going to get his big chance today. Martial retains his player on the left because I basically don't have anyone else on the left. Jerry Tossum is in behind Glenn Hazel. And Diaby is going to make his appearance on the right-hand side. He's got three goals in the last two games that he's played for me as Diaby. So if he can retain that kind of form, we'll be in business. I'm looking at their team here. Yeah, theirs is ridiculous. So they've got Courtois still, Matt Vienko, Canate, Marquinhos, Odriozola, Toliso, Barele, Yao Felix, Vinicius Junior, Leroy Sane, and a boy Barrios up front who is very good indeed. It'll be a good test for our boys. Glenn Hazel needs to really pull his uh, pull his finger out here. Um, so I'm going to say to them that no one expects us to win today, but let's go out there and show everyone what we're capable of. That That should be enough of an incentive to get the boys going. I don't want to different, uh, you know, move away from the system that's done us quite well. I want us to stick with what we have been doing, which is this 4-2-3-1. But maybe it's time to change formation around a little bit because we're getting found out. Um, like I said, we can beat the bigger of the smaller teams. I thought this year would be different because we'd beat Arsenal and Liverpool away. Do you know what I mean? I thought that yeah, that's a statement. That's the difference. But maybe Liverpool and Arsenal aren't the same standard as Man United in this game. And it's literally as simple as that. United are just that far ahead of everyone else. I'll be gutted if we end this save without winning the Premier League. 
or the Champions League, but the Premier League would be brilliant. Do you know what I mean? It'd be so nice to win the Premier League, but I, I, I'm beginning to get that feeling, that real sinking sensation, sinking feeling that we're not going to win it, and it's all because of Man United, which makes it worse, because as we all know, I can't stand Man United. As a Liverpool fan, and just as a football fan in general, I just cannot stand them. And uh, someone's having some fun upstairs. I can talk about my kind of footballing philosophies and everything because nothing is happening in this game, which actually suits me down to the ground. We come away from the Bernabeu with a nil-nil. I'll be well happy. And Vicinicius Jr. has gone off with an injury, which is also good news. Diego Jota's coming on to replace him. Marcus to Miguel. Spread the play, mate. Nice to toss him. Finds Goretzka. Nice little triangles going in the midfield there. DRB has went for the overlap there from Hassan, but he didn't provide it. Toss him into Anthony Martial. Drifts inside again, Martial. To DRB, hits it. Good save by Courtois. Poor finish from DRB. Deserved better. It was a really well-worked move. Oh, Glenn Hazel playing at 6.4. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine our two top-quality centre-forwards playing like absolute turd while we're on camera? Could you imagine it? I found it so hard this year. To like find strikers that I love. Do you know what I mean? Like in the last last year in FM18. By the way, I just told everyone that I was happy with the performance because I am. But last year, you know, in FM8, we had loads. Do you know what I mean? We had Brenner. We had Fear Arp. We had Arnautovic. We had players that I really, really liked. I really, really enjoyed. And this year, I've just apart from Jack Lancaster, Jack Lancaster, and Dan Maguire from the Blive save. They're the only two that have really captured my heart this year. Actually, I'll, I'll have Casper Dolberg in that as well, but then obviously he broke my heart and the Southampton saved by moving. Spoilers. But just, like, I found it so hard to fall in love with strikers this year. It's natural for you to want to fall in love with strikers because they're yeah, the ones that get you all the goals and this, that, and the other. But we've just not had that this year. It's disappointing. I'm going to take Jerry Tossum off and bring on Artur Matisiak. And, and maybe I'm going to take off anti Martial as well and bring on Santiago Gaitan. We're going to move the RV out to the left and Gaitan can go to the right. I need to protect Martial a little bit because, like I said, he's our only real uh, out and out left winger. So I do need to get, protect him slightly. Otherwise, we're going to be without one of our best players if I overplay him. Well, I said I wanted a better defensive performance, and this has certainly been that. In all fairness, we've restricted Real Madrid at the Bernabeu to only six shots on target. We've just not. I say we haven't carried much of a threat ourselves. We actually have. Let's be fair. We have. But one person who hasn't carried a threat today is Glenn Hazel. And he can literally just bugger off at this stage. I'm genuinely tempted to sell him in January. If I sell Glenn Hazel in January, we might be able to invest and get one more top quality player in, I think. Because I've got 20 million in the bank. Glenn Hazel, I reckon I could sell for maybe 80, 90 million, maybe. Maybe not on the form of this season, actually, to be fair. But normally, I'd say we could really, really do well without him. Corner, eh? Gaitan whips it in. Tolisso heads clear, but falls only as far as Goretz get on. Oh, that's brilliant from Bernardo Silva. Please don't let them score on the counter. Come on, we've done so well. Not like this. Silva to Diogo Jota. Jota hits it. Mm, I'm finding it. I'm finding it really difficult not to swear now. I mean... Could you get any more unlucky? Could you get any more unlucky? Could you get any more unlucky? They don't deserve that. That's the first flipping highlight they've had all game. Obviously they score from it. Obviously it comes off Mikhail Christensen. He's been brilliant. And we just get shafted like that. It's, just, it's not... The episode is not going well. 1-0 to Real Madrid. Completely undeserved. And I'm going to say unlucky, boys, because we are. And suddenly, from being completely unbeaten, we've lost two in our last three. And we haven't won in three games either. And please don't try and buy Markovic. Just piss off and leave me alone. Chelsea's up next for the final game of the three. And if it's anything like this, it's going to end 1-0. It's going to come off flipping Hazel's arse crack and go in. Oh, good. Timo Forster's up for three to five weeks, which means I'm stuck with Glenn Hazel and Mick McWilliams, which is good. Because they played so well on camera. Why do I bother turning the camera on? Can I just do end of season reviews? Can I just do the season and then come back and then just tell you what happened? Because every time I set the. F every time I come on flipping camera, we just 
make a meal of everything. We just don't win anything. It's just pissing me off. But I don't do anything different on camera than I do off camera. And it's just like, what can I do? What more can we do? Alright, well, we're the early game on Saturday. United are playing Southampton in the late kickoff. Uh, there's not really many other of the big guns playing today. So this is a huge game against Chelsea. This is massive. We need to win this. If we have any aspirations of, main, of, of winning a title, we need to win this today. There's no getting around it. This is a must-win game. And with that in mind, I've gone for a bit more experience today. Christensen's in goal. Kopilov, Zagadou, Markovic, Hassan. I think they played really well against Real Madrid, and there was, they were just so unlucky to concede. Bentecourt and Goretzka make up the middle of the park. Two very experienced campaigners, two very experienced midfielders. will uh, obviously, hopefully, be able to feed the ball onto this dynamic front four. Martial's on the left, Mora and then Diaby are the other two. And then Mitt McWilliams leads the line up front after Glenn Hazel again disappointed me uh, in the last game. He's just not firing. At least Mitt McWilliams has got goals this year. We need a performance, and they've got some very decent players. They've got a lot. A very good news. And Hassan Owar is obviously a player we need to watch out for Azazata. But it's this boy here. Alberto Fabri up front. Absolutely on fire in the season at the moment. Eight games played. Six goals and one assist to his name. You look at his attributes. He is mentally good. I'm going to get aggressive and say I expect to win today. That's not pumped anybody up. That's irritating me already. And I want and I demand better. I demand better. Got to watch out for Jane Sancho and Tom Chatfield down the wings. That's why we're playing the 4-2-3-1. I cannot afford for the fullbacks to get isolated up against their wingers because they are absolutely phenomenal and that's where they're going to create the chances from. If we have any aspirations of winning a title, this game needs to end in a Villa win. It has to end in a Villa win. We're very good at home. We, we tend to play quite well, but recently against the smaller teams, the ones that come sit back, We've had real issues in breaking them down. I'm hoping that today we'll just be able to get a goal, sit back, hit on the counter. That's got to be the plan. But at the moment, we're having the better of the play, but it doesn't matter because none of it is translating into highlights. I say that. There's one now. Good play by Mick McWilliams. Take your time, mate. Mora. Mora hits it. Kepa with a decent save. Tips it wide. First chance goes to us. And a very good bit of build-up there between Mick McWilliams and Mora. More of that, please. <laughs> More of that. You see what I'm doing there. I've asked the boys to get creative, and that's inspired them. Inspired them to create. No chances. I'm going to say, actually, let's get the play out wide. Forget running at the defence. Let's just get the play wide. Here we go, right. Hassan on the ball. Please don't score from a counter, for God's sake. Tonali heads it away. Hassan on the ball. Whips in. Back post. Anti Martial. It's in. But I think it's going to be disallowed. It looks like a tight decision. I thought he looked on. I thought he looked on. It's been given. Anthony Martial scores again. He's been in brilliant form so far this season. We got the ball out wide. We made the most of it. A wonderful ball in from Hassan. And Anthony Martial has scored in the biggest game of the season so far for us. Great player by Hassan on his wrong foot. Whips it in. Martial does look onside. Kepa should probably save it. But it's just smashed past him. We'll see it here. How close is this? Brilliant play by Martial there. He is being kept on. Great, great effort. Tight margins in big games make a big difference. And now we are ahead and back up to second in the table. Level with Chelsea. Needed that immensely. It's been a very good half of Villa. We have dominated the majority of it. No positives for Chelsea. And that, well, in their review that at the end of that first half, brilliant from us. I said, I'm passionately, I'm very happy with your performance. Keep it up. If I can just get Mick McWilliams or one of the boys to get a second goal, we will be in business because we are quite good. Touch wood at the back. I will have to take Oral Moore off at some point. I'm kind of resigned to that fact because he's carrying a bit of a knock. But the first half, uh, first chance of the second half happens, and Fabry is in in behind. Fabry, good save by Christensen there. Oh no, it was Zagadou, and then on to Christensen. A brilliant block and a good save. Well done, boys. Okay, right, we're nearly half an hour to go. I'm going to take Oral Mora off, and I'm going to bring on Abel Miguel. He played very well against Real Madrid. He's going to sit back and be our defensive midfielder. We're just going to shore up a little bit there. I have faith that 1-0 will be enough. I don't care how many goals we score as long as we win the game. It's going to be a very, very tight season. We have the firepower to blow away the smaller teams. These big games, it is literally all about getting the three points, especially at home. We can't afford to lose any games at home to any of the big clubs or to any club in general. 
three minutes of added on time. I'm incredibly tense right now. Chelsea have really kind of come back at us in the second half, but they've not really been much in the way of highlights. As Kopilov gets the ball, throws it to Glenn Hazel. Hazel. Yes! Yes! A 1 0 win. Back in business. Abdullah Hassan gets man of the match. Yes! I'm going to pass it to say a very nice victory. Well done. Get in! That's massive. Ormore has got a bruised ankle out for one to three days. I can't wait till Vile gets back. The, 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 the partnership he formed with Bentacule was what was keeping us in it. And I, we really miss him in the big games. I don't know if he would have made a difference against United. It kind of feels like he would have done. But that is some way to bounce back, I have to say. I'm incredibly proud that we bounce back from that. It is, yes, so good. Right, in terms of where we come back, uh, I think it's going to have to be the last game of the Champions League group and Manchester City away at the Etihad. Both of those coming in December, so we're going to have a little bit more of a jump in time. Hopefully we'll be down to the later rounds and we'll have more episodes towards the end of the season as the tension ramps up. Let me know what you think I should do with Glenn Hazel, by the way. Is it worth me selling him? Has he done enough? I know that his, his record isn't bad. I just I just haven't seen enough of it on camera. I think we're all sure that Mick McWilliams is a very good player. But Glenn Hazel has actually got 40 goals and 70 appearances for me. That's a really good ratio. That's a really good ratio. It's just this season he's just not been at it. Is that because I'm not playing him enough? Or I don't know. Because Mick McWilliams has got 30 in 55. He's only 10 behind Glenn. So he, I think, is the better striker. But there's something about Glenn that makes me think that I'm not getting the best out of him. And I could do. And I don't know how. I can't play them both together because this leaves us too open. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm happy to hear your thoughts on it. And thank you so much for watching the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I enjoyed the third game. Other than that, it was infuriating. <laughs> but if you have enjoyed the episode, please do like, share and subscribe. And until I see you for that crucial Champions League game and then a trip to the Etihad, stay cool. Flipping out, Glenn. Pull yourself together.